I'm John Davis. I'm uh, the Learning Futures Advisor for Dudley Grid for Learning. So we've come a long way in, in the first 10 years of Dudley Grid. Um, what we see is a, a journey in learning with technology going through three phases, really. Uh, phase one, we would see technology being used to support learning. Uh, typically, that would mean you're replicating things you could do just as well using traditional technologies, paper and pencil. It, it's actually a very important phase to go through. It's a phase where teachers and young people get comfortable, familiar and confident with technology. But it's a phase that we need to move out from. Second phase we'd identify in terms of moving on as uh, enhancing learning with technology. And in the enhancing phase, we are typically doing unusual things, things you could not replicate using traditional technologies, uh, enthusing and engaging young people, but again, not meeting our ultimate aim, which is the highest phase of learning with technology, which is about accelerating learning. And that phase, I think, depends on, first of all, people. People are the key to accelerating learning, but on top of that, young people need access. Unlimited access actually restricts the ability to accelerate learning, to raise standards significantly, rather than just dabbling with e-learning. We, we think that until young people have uh, access to a device when they need to, making autonomous decisions about making using technology, then we're still actually e-dabbling, rather than immersing them in, in genuine e-learning experiences. So I suppose a, a good illustration of what I mean in terms of supporting learning is if you take something like a Microsoft Word. Now they all have access to Microsoft Word. Uh, they all use it, but if I illustrate what I mean by, by referring to, to Word, um, as a tool to support learning and replicating what they could do with paper and pencil, they might go to it and actually type up a piece of work they've already written in their exercise book. And that might mean for, be for display reasons. But actually in terms of moving their learning forward has done little or anything. They might have picked up some useful ICT keyboard skills, but other than that, in terms of their learning, it's, it's quite limited. But again, an important phase to go through. Moving on with Word to uh, enhancing the experience, then obviously you start adding images. You may well be uh, highlighting and changing fonts and um, getting some keywords to stand out. Uh, the piece of work is now looking a lot better, a lot different. I might be using the spell checker uh, to correct errors. But still in terms of their learning, very limited other than uh, perhaps some basic ICT skills. On the other hand, if you take Word and use it in a way that I very rarely see. So first of all, you need to attach to the computer uh, a microphone. So again, I'm, I might go into lots of schools and see hundreds and thousands of uh, headsets. But actually, if I go into an ICT, first thing I'm looking for is, are there microphones around the room? So microphones are about inputs. Uh, young people putting their creativity into a piece of work rather than outputs that come through a headset. So let's attach a microphone to a computer and using Microsoft Word, three click, clicks, insert, object, wave sound and open up the recording facility that comes with the Word package. Now this term, this time when a, when a child inputs text into Word, we expect them to read it to record it, to listen to themselves reading it, and then to go back and edit it. So now, on the Word document, not only do you see the text the child has generated, you also see a, a WAV file attached. Click on the WAV file, you hear the child reading that piece of work. So first of all, the child has to read their own piece of work. Then they start editing. The teacher comes along and uses their expertise to explain to the child what they might do to improve that piece of text. And then the child takes ownership of the process. They start to look at the editing process, they start to draft it, and they start to manipulate and change that piece of work. At each stage in its editing, they again record, click, insert object waves, and very, very easy. 
takes 30 seconds for them to learn how to do it. They edit it at each stage. It, it adds a wave file to the bottom of the document. So I've now got a completed document. I've got the final text in front of me. But what I've got at the bottom is an audio trail of that piece of work as it went through the editing process. Our idea is the child clicks on the original piece of work and listens to the first piece of text they generated, themselves reading it. Then they click on the final, final audio file and they listen to the final version so they can hear how it's changed. Now the impact is dramatic. The most reluctant writer suddenly engaged in the process, is drawn into the process and is enthused and engaged and wanting to write. And the actual idea is, is very straightforward. That lots of people talk uh, that writers need an audience, but the key audience for any writer is not the class teacher, it's not the classroom, it's not the school, it's not the planet if you publish on the internet. The key audience for any writer is the writer themselves. Until they're aware of that and appreciate that, then you never actually genuinely develop young people as writers. So we want them to recognise that the piece of work they're creating has first of all got to give them pleasure. They've got to be proud of it. So in get them to record it and to listen to themselves reading, they get a sense of the quality, not just how they've read it, but the quality of the language they're using and its impact on a potential wider, secondary, less important audience. We recognise within certainly half a term a significant improvement of the quality of the writing. Uh, we see a significant improvement in their understanding of the process and their enthusiasm in wanting to write. And again, we have examples of you know, some rich language that's been generated from often you know, you know, quite reluctant, disengaged learners.